What is the purpose of the calling games? This seems to be a rhetoric I see pushed quite a lot. So for this video, I'm going to try explain thoroughly what the point of the calling games is, as well as each and individual plot line we have got from each colony. At the end of this video, I hope I would have made it very thorough and you would have understood everything if you are confused. And let's start off with what is the aim of the culling games. So what is the culling games? First, the culling games is a basically Royal Rumble deathmatch with having reincarnated sorcerers come back as cursed objects. This was done with Kenjaku making binding vows back in the day with previous sorcerers to bring him back and reinstate the golden age of Jujutsu sorcery. So the first thing is the culling game started due to Kenjaku. So let's look at our four main plot lines which we have come into the culling games with. Firstly, Kenjaku, his plan is to optimize curse energy and from what we know is he wants to evolve humanity. In specific, we can see from the little dialogue that we got from Tengen that he wants to merge with Tengen and use cursed spirit manipulation to make the worst case scenario for humanity. Now, what is the main goals of our main cast? This is to unseal Gojo and to save Megami's sister. With these two plot lines, they've come into the culling games to try and get back their sensei, as well as prevent Megami's sister from dying, and by doing so, they're trying to get points to end the culling games. So the first rule that they have added to the culling games between the Yuji and Higuruma conflict is that points can be transferable. The second rule is to allow use of 100 points to create a substitute so they can withdraw and heal and to save culling games victims. The third is to remove communications block so people can freely communicate between colonies. However, this rule has been put on hold by Momo because Maki can one, go through barriers and they're working with Mei Mei's brother for communication. Fourth rule that they wanted to add is that people can roll in and out of the barriers to one, save culling games victims and to two, be able to heal. So these are the four main objectives our main cast have gone into while going into the culling games. Now, what have we learned in the Tokyo number one colony? So first we got to see Yuji begin to develop as a character and accept the situation in Shibuya. More than that it highlights to us as the audience how much he still has to go to accept that it wasn't his fault. Even if he is to blame with the fact that he is too weak to control Sukuna, he unfortunately was taken over by Sukuna who caused the massacre in Shibuya. We also got to meet an interesting character such as Higuruma who showed us some of the old school domains that Tengen has been alluding to. We got to see his thoughts on justice and I think he's one of the most interesting characters. As well as we got to see arguably be the biggest prodigy we've seen in the series with him learning curse energy, a domain expansion, reverse engineering a barrier technique to a domain expansion within 12 days. This is the quickest that we've seen in the series and it highlights how a genius such as Higuruma is a very important character. Moreover, his concept of blind justice is interesting and I think it will be a further plotline that is explored. More than just that, we saw how he has gone through a way which was opposite to Gato, how that has similarities with him. He took a different avenue to Gato with the fact that he saw the injustice with the world. Instead of trying to kill everybody, he's gone through the other way of using his technique to enact blind justice. Moreover, it seems as if the end of the conflict has allowed him to reshape his resolve and begin to fight for his justice that he's been doing and get to a point where he doesn't go through a similar path with someone such as Gato. More than just that, I think Higuruma's character is one of the most interesting and with his usage of a domain expansion being a short hit effect it gives us an indication to how different domains can be done and i think he's one of the most interesting characters that have been introduced into the culling games moreover his talk on justice can correlate to a lot of real life theme and i think as if this was a good way to highlight the injustices in the jujutsu world tokyo number two colin so this is Megami's colony and at first what we can see is this was a very important to Megami's development. First he begins to fully trust his friends which is a huge development for him as a character. There were so many moments that we've seen in the series where he has been tedious and the borderline of being able to trust other people and it's got to a situation when once we saw that the points had been added he began to fully trust in Yuji and the rest of them and begin to do whatever he had to do in this colony. So before that, we can see that one, he doesn't try to use Muhuraga even when he was in the back foot. 
and it too it showed his resolve to saving his sister and begin to trust other people we also got to see how his domain has become more refined and we saw that he gets a 120 percent buff to his stats we got to see him as a character become more competent in fights and even overpower a weakness in a fight against reggie now we got to meet the new people and we get to meet Takaba who has one of the most broken curse techniques and he's more of a gag character. We got to meet Reggie with his receipts and the high end era sorcerer who alluded that Kenjaku's plan is bigger than what we expect. We also get to a point was Megami potentially cursed with let fate toy with you until you die like a fool which could be potential foreshadowing of future plot lines and an unfortunate tragic conclusion to Megami. Regardless of this, I think this arc was very good, gave us a great fight, and it obviously showed something that development for both our characters in Megami and Yuji. And then at the back end of that colony, we got to see that Angel has saved Megami, which has seemed to be a huge plotline that we're expecting to get developed throughout the colony. Now, Sendai Colony. In the Sendai Colony, we finally got to see Yuta back in action and how much he has grown. He has a domain expansion, his proficiency in RCT, we got to see Rika fully manifested with the abilities explained since Zero, his curse technique being revealed in Mimicry, as well as his potential lineage with the Fujiwara clan. We also get to him himself deem that he will kill Kenjaku. We can insinuate that there's going to be a Utah and Kenjaku clash down the line. Moreover, we got to meet someone such as Uru who has a very interesting tie to the past and somebody who could be key to explaining a lot of Yuta's lineage. She has some revenge that she's going through and we got some key information with learning with the fact that, that there is a potential afterlife in JJK. This could be something that could relate with something such as the Curse Realm, however this is headcanon and it just speaks volumes to the potential plot lines to come from it. And then we met someone interesting such as Ryu who has the highest cursed energy output in the series. This is significant because out of all the people we've met such as Gojo, Sukuna, Ryu has the highest output and this is a key thing because it highlights how someone such as Yuta could use reinforcement to make up for the deficiencies of having a slightly inferior output to someone such as Ryu. We also got to see our first three-way domain expansion and even though it was clashed we got to see a little bit in terms of how sure hit effects will be negated most refined domain will win we also get to meet someone such as kurarushi who showed us something interesting we saw how kurarushi was exercised however through the fear of humanity was managed to come back and i think this is a key thing that will be shown in the future with first even now you're coming back as eventual spirits and the fear of curses making them come back alive and then we got to the conclusion part where we got to see Miwa who is going to be an interesting person because they had been deemed as useless throughout the series who's eventually in my opinion going to have a big part to play down in the story. And then the final calling game participant was Juve who had Obuto Shikigami which allowed Yuta to copy his ability. And then we get to Hakari and Kashimo's colony. In the Hakari and Kashimo colony, we get to learn important things. Firstly, these were two characters who were hyped up, and we got to learn something with Kashimo only using his cursed energy properties in the fight against Hakari. We got to learn that people can potentially use one-time techniques, Kashimo having a one-time technique that he's saving for Sukuno, and we got to finally build up on the hype of a character who has been hyped up from the start of the culling games. Igaruma and Kashimo were seen as the two big bad bosses, and even still, we I believe they both delivered on that hype. But more so than that, we got to see that he has a nice relationship with someone back with Kenjaku and his main goal is to fight Sukuna. Also met on someone such as Akari who has been hyped up from a long period of time. We got to see why Gozo has such faith in him as a character. One, his domain expansion is one of the most broken domain expansions we've seen as well as his ability of the highest application of reverse curse technique. He also shown us the first ever thing in being able to move coordinates in your domain expansion which I believe is something that could be foreshadowed in the future and we got to see him use something such as binding valves to prevent his body from being exploded. I think this gave us nice backdrop to a lot of how crazy the power system can be used. I think it just gave us an elite level fight between two elite level combatants. But more so than that we got to the fact with both of these people are going to be key players in the future. This was probably the one with the least characterization in the colony. More than just that, I think they've set up the nice development for the future plotline. And then in the current colony with Maki and Naya, we got to learn one, how people can come back as eventual spirits, indicated with Naya. 
Two, we got to see potential and metamorphosis and Naya being able to evolve multiple times. Three, we got to see what happened to Kamo and with Kenjaku's plan. We saw that Kenjaku has taken over the Kamo clan and why Kamo was ostracized. And we got to see more in depth of potential the Kyoto students having more purpose in the story. More so than just that, we got to a part where we got to see Maki's POV since the conclusion of the Zenin clan and what she was lacking to finally become Toji. And currently with this colony not being completed, I think the introduction of Daido and Miyu have been some of the most interesting things and have been things that have been alluded throughout the series. So Kuna and Kenjaku would always specifically talk about humans, sorcerers and non-sorcerers. People such as Miyu and Daido could potentially be the humans that were talking about in the old age Jujutsu sorcerers who were people who could still fight against these curses and other sorcerers. Regardless of this, every introduction of our old sorcerer has been some of my favourites and I believe they've added something of big purpose to the story going forward. This will be the end of the calling games of what is the purpose. I hope I made it clear and understandable for those who do not understand what is going on and if you think i missed anything or things that i needed to add let me know down below and thank you guys for watching and make sure to like comment share subscribe